So, giving thanks. Giving thanks. We get, you know, there's all sorts of lovely things to give thanks for. As Kenneth, uh, that, what he just sang is absolutely right. An attitude of gratitude about every aspect of your being in whatever condition it currently is. In all things, give thanks. Uh, uh, First Thessalonians tells us. In all things, give thanks. Uh, because it, it's the power of blessing, as we've talked about so many times. The power of blessing multiplies. I give thanks for my lovely legs. I give thanks for my heart. I give thanks. I give thanks. I give thanks. I am willing to know an attitude of gratitude. I was telling someone this morning about a healing I had years ago. And most of you have heard about this. I had fallen off of a stage and I, I really, I did things to my ankle that I, I, uh, <laughs> it hurt. It hurt and it took, and, and I, uh, I had no insurance. So I had to do a uh, faith healing. And I went home that night, two friends of mine helped me home from work and, and they got me up my steps and walked my dogs for me. And I looked around the apartment and I thought, oh, I have an ace bandage, great. And my grandfather's cane, I have a cane, oh, I've never used a cane before, how thrilling. You know, you make the most out of things. So suddenly it became, a, I was playing. And, and so I had this cane I could hobble around. After about three days, I was, I, I was kind of over the cane. It was no longer a convenience in New York City with a bunch of uh, steps and what have you and a bag. And so I, uh, I just limped with my ace bandage. And a week later, I was praying. I sat down to do my morning meditation. I used to clean sound equipment at a dance studio and I saved this one room for last. It was the tap room, but it didn't get used till late in the day. So it was very quiet. And I would do my meditation every week in that room. And I always started my meditation privately with uh, the Christ in me is awake now. Now I was not trying to have a healing here, but as I said, the Christ in me is awake now. Something happened right here and I felt a ripple go down my body and my ankle went eh. And I was back on rollerblades two days later. I can't explain that in words. I can tell you the events. I can tell you what I was thinking, but I can't tell you how a ripple started at my excl exclamation of the Christ in me is awake, awake now because I'd never felt anything like that before. And I had a physical healing. And I, I, if I, well, I was a believer before, but then I, I, I was an experienced believer after that. And that's what we all want to do. We want to become experienced believers. It's, it's so much easier to have our gratitude as we have our experiences of healing. I chose to believe people who had had healings. I thought just because I haven't seen one doesn't mean they aren't possible. I guess I'll be having mine some of these days. And I've had many, many healings. That, that ankle thing is probably the most dramatic uh, that I've ever seen. It's like, Ooh. And, and, and so it was, uh, I'm very grateful for it. And I would imagine just about everybody is talking in every church in, in America today is talking about gratitude in one form or another. I, I, I was with a healing group yesterday and, and they were talking about uh, finding gratitude, but they were also talking about concerns and uh, perhaps remorse this year that they can't be, you know, you can't gather in large groups and you can't do all this. And, and I said to these people, I said, I have been coming to these groups for well over 20 years now, maybe over 25, not maybe, I over 25. And I said, in all those years, every single year, I hear people in this meeting complaining that they have to get together with their insane families. <laughs> And this year, they're complaining that they can't get together with those awful people. <laughs> I think we just like to complain. Fine. But while you're complaining, no, it doesn't mean anything. Just, know, just realize, oh, you're looking to fill the God-shaped hole. You're looking in some way, and that's, most of the time, we're not most of the time, a lot of us, a lot of time, we're trying to fill it with uh, something unlike God, something that doesn't look like God, because it's safer. It's safer to complain than praise. It's safer to project the worst than the best. At least if the worst happens, I won't be disappointed. 
And some of us can't bear the thoughts and the feelings of disappointment. And so just become aware of that and say, oh, I'm afraid of disappointment. I'm afraid of what that will feel like. I'm even more afraid of disappointment happening than I am of the worst happening. And so let's start, as we work with our God mind and our God potential, and declare there is no worst. I've already been through the worst. I have experienced the worst already. From here on in, it's just stuff that is either lovely or stuff I don't understand. Could it be okay that from now on, Events, things that take place, are just things that we don't understand sometimes. They look awful, they feel awful, but maybe they're not. Maybe that's the time to go within and not say, God, how could you let this happen? Because that's not what God is. God's not one who lets things happen or stops things from happening. And a friend of mine recently who was diagnosed with a minor stage one cancer, and she said, oh, that's how I know, I have higher power, it's only stage one. And I thought, does that mean the people who have died of it don't have God, how, how silly and how self, uh, self-centered self we are to think, oh, I am blessed by God because mine is light. And if God is so great, why'd you get it at all? And, you know, we got to think of these things and realize, oh, people are getting cancer all the time. People are living all the time. They're dying all the time. People are hungry. People are overfed. There's all sorts of stuff going on that I don't understand. I barely of an understanding of my own life. But I believe in a higher power. I believe in a power greater than myself, meaning greater than my ego. And I, to me, the power greater than myself is coming here to unity with everybody else. And when we come here together, we begin to think differently and we begin to think more sanely and we begin to think with reverence and joy and fun and laughter and, uh, and we start to accept the stuff that uh, we never understood before and our opinions aren't so uh, so important and our past pain and tragedies and stuff, that isn't as important as it was because we don't really know what it means. We just know what it felt like and we know what we've been telling ourselves to feel about it for all these years. And now we come to a place like this and somebody like me tells you, stop it. You don't have to feel that way anymore. Stop telling yourself how to feel about this. Stop telling yourself whether it's good or bad and start telling yourself, I am loved with an everlasting love and I am willing to find gratitude for this and everything in my life. Gratitude is not the same as glee. It's not, woohoo, grandma died. It's not that. <laughs> but I can say my grandmother made her transition. At one friend of mine teaches her child, and now she knows the secret. I am willing to wish my grandmother well on the next part of her journey. I was talking to a group the other day. This was funny to me. And uh, it was not a unity group. And I, and somebody's father had, had, had made his transition and I, uh, and I said, oh, back when my mother made her transition and somebody said, what's transition? And so I wrote in the side box, I, this is a Zoom group. And I said, oh, she died. And the woman said, oh, okay. I thought maybe she had become a man. <laughs> I thought, really? She had transitioned from ma- female to male, which nothing wrong with that, but. My mother, no, not so much. (laughs) So, let's listen to this from from the Holy Spirit's interpretation from 1 Timothy chapter 4, and it says, Love thyself. To know thyself, you must be willing to love thyself. But to love thyself is not to love the personhood or the personality, nor is it to reject the personhood. For no thing within God can be rejected by love. That's why we don't have to hate our ego. You know, there's so much, of course, the miracles of people, they misunderstand. And they start to, oh, you must hate your ego. Why? Why must you hate your ego? It's like hating dis-ease. All it does is strengthen the hate. It does, and and the activity of the dis-ease. 
Make friends. Love thyself. To love thyself is to love all things in all circumstances because you know all things in all circumstances come into being through God, which is all that is. Well, I know so many people in the world who have an argument for that. So many people. And they will play that card, whether it's the Holocaust card, whether it's our current political situation card, whether it's dis-ease card, whether, you know, death of a loved one card. But it says here, to love thyself is to love all things within God. Oh, for, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. To love thyself is to love all things in all circumstances, because you know all things in all circumstances come into being through God, which is all that is, which goes back to saying, I don't understand. I don't have the words. But go within and say, I am willing to know. I am willing to love the circumstances. Show me how. And if you don't do that, if you have the argument, it tells you, you don't want to love yourself. And no offense. I really don't mean to offend anybody. But look down inside and say, oh, I think he's right. I, I'm fighting loving myself by saying this circumstance shouldn't have happened. And my, my argument for that is, but it did happen. But it shouldn't have. But it did. But it shouldn't have. But it did. And that's always going to be where it is. It did, and you don't like it. That's fine. You would have chosen something else. You have preferences. I get it. I have preferences. There are many circumstances in life, many conflicts between personalities that I wish had not happened, but they did. And they happened because we forgot to love the circumstances. We forgot to go within and say, show me how to love. I am willing to know, show me how to love myself and show me how to love Sean or the other way around. Show me how to love myself and show me how to love this being. There is a solution and it's a spiritual solution. And in this time of giving thanks, let us seek that spiritual solution to go on. Be grateful for the process that is God. In this way, you come to know within awareness that which is God, and you come to accept and love thyself. The process, that's why I picked this passage, is because of that term. The process that is God. In all my years of healing, it has been a process. God is not the same God I had at the beginning of this. And for years, it seemed like every time I wanted to know God, so I get that down pat. And every time I thought I knew God, God went and changed on me. God wasn't what I thought it was. The problem was it was bigger. It was so much bigger than I had thought it was. It was wider, it was taller, it was deeper. And it had fewer words to describe it because words limit, ultimately. And so the, I, I had fewer words to describe God and therefore God, that's how God got so much bigger. And half the time I'd have to, the final answer around it was, I don't know, but I'm willing to accept that it is. I don't know how it's love, but I'm willing to accept that it is. And here's why I became willing. Because I felt better. I felt happier. I felt freer. And on the days when I'm not willing and I try to scrunch God into a box along with me, uh, I'm not free. I'm not happy. And I miss out on all the divine promises of God. And again, people will argue, but Sean, what about all the other people who aren't doing it? And I said, and imagine if they did. Imagine if they decided today, God is so big, I can't describe it, but I'm willing to love it. Imagine that. Would you be willing that all beings fall in love with themselves? 
Uh, you know, and sometimes we think somebody with a big ego just loves themselves. No, they don't love themselves at all. They're so confused. Would you be willing that all beings fall in love with themselves and each other? Would you be willing that the being you fear the most, that you hate the most today, falls in love with you and reveals their God self to you? Would you let them show it or would you hold them and yourself to your old false selves and ignore the potential of gratitude? Which would you do? That's soul searching. We got to look at that. So now let's look over to Hebrews chapter three. Here it says, oops, oops, oh no, I lost my next spot. There we go. Uh, Hebrews chapter three, be grateful for who you are for you are all things. And your gratitude for all things, the awakening to all things occurs. You do not sleep in your awareness of truth. You sleep in your forgetfulness. And you are aware, I'm not talking about when we go to bed at night, we're talking about being awake during the day and just asleep, unaware. So you do not sleep in your awareness of truth. You sleep in your forgetfulness. In your awareness, you are awake. In your gratitude, awake fullness is praised. Give thanks for every moment. Every moment that you experience your awakened state to any degree or any measure, each glimmer and each fluttering of the eyes is a moment that is truly praiseworthy. Fall to your knees in gratitude and you hasten upon itself the state that is fully awakened. And then this last one from Revelation, the book of Revelation, and it's chapter eight. And it says, and the light of heaven is seen. The light of heaven is seen to be that which is yourself. Its joy is your joy. Its gratitude is your gratitude. Its oneness is your oneness. And its love is yourself. Never have you been separate from heaven, and never has heaven been separate from you. For how can one, even for a moment, be separate from the one that is his or herself? In this knowledge is all joy. In this knowledge is all peace. In this knowledge is fear wiped out forever. Because in this knowledge, it is seen that it is impossible that there could be anything separate from you to fear. It is impossible. In the knowledge, in the awakened state, in the love of self, in the heaven consciousness, it is impossible to imagine anything to fear because nothing could be separate from you. All I have in my head right now is that song that Kenneth sang before. Praise your eyes and praise your feet and praise your... Th it's true. Start praising your life, even if you don't know why to praise it. Say, thank you, God, or thank you, self. Thank you, me, that I have attracted this in order to awaken during this particular Sunday service this celebration service. I am grateful today, and that could be how you praise it. I am grateful today for a glimmer of light. I'm grateful today to see. I'm grateful today that God is so much more than I imagined it to be. And I am grateful today that you and I are so much more than I have imagined us to be. I am grateful today that I have been wrong about so many things. I am grateful today that there is so much more. I am so grateful today that all of my needs are met and I'm even grateful that not all of my wants are met. And that's hard for me to say, but I'm willing to be grateful 
for knowing the truth. Because let's face it, as we are told, when we know the truth, we are free. So I wish you well for this holiday, this coming Thursday, this holiday. If you are having dinner by yourself, it would seem, with your one body in your home, give thanks that you're not alone. God is here. God is here moving among us. If there are two of you having dinner on Thursday or doing something on there, watching a movie, whatever, but it's just the two of you this year, and maybe it's just the two of you again this year, who knows? Praise it. Invite the vision of God into your time together. If it's just a few more, I invite you to sing the Every Little Cell song. I invite you not to be frightened of what's going on in our world, but to respect it and the possibility within it. And so if you are together with others, you keep your distance. You wear your mask when you're not eating. You open a window and light a fireplace. Splurge that day, raise the heat and turn open a couple of windows for some circulation. But I invite you this week, every moment of every day, invite the light of God into your thoughts, into your vision, into your words, into your actions, so that every moment of every day, you may say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Amen.